some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had now, a one of the great questions that people God the Creator should be obvious by the Gentiles. If you were looking down or Jesus from high lines of God the Creator. Why would God want us to carry out his work when we would fail him so often? And I thought of the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen, yes, and things which are not to bring to nothing things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Sometimes as I'm preaching, people will come to me afterwards and they'll say, well, you know, I just, I couldn't do that. And they begin to explain, they give me the reasons why they feel disqualified for serving the Lord in a particular way. And after they've gone on for a while, I interrupt them and say, you know, you really are giving the job description. This is exactly the kind of person God wants to use. The very things that we think disqualify us from God using us are the very things that God uses. And so the Apostle Paul comes to the end of 2 Corinthians and he says to them, you forced me to boast by all the other preachers that come to town, they boast and you think they're great, you see. And the danger is that because I don't boast, you don't take my message seriously. I don't care about you thinking highly of me. I don't think highly of me myself. But I do care very much that you listen to the message I have. And so you force me to boast. And so he goes through this long list and then comes to the end and says, I fooled you, didn't I? I'm not boasting in my strengths. I'm boasting in my weakness. I've been kicked around and beaten and floating out in the sea and in perils of my countrymen and, and all the rest. He said, I'm not boasting in my greatness. I'm boasting in my weakness. I have learned a great principle that God doesn't use us where we're strong because then we'd take the glory. He uses us where we're weak. And so that's why God uses people like us. Not because he doesn't have anything else to do. He could do it all himself. He did make the universe by himself, you know. But he started with nothing to make the universe. And so he gets all the glory for the universe. No one else can do that. And when he made the church, he started with nothing too, didn't he? The things that are nothing to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And so if you feel weak and failing, and without strength and not very eloquent, why you're just the person for the job. That's exactly what God has said. I glory in my infirmity, said Paul, because that's where the power of Christ rests upon me. Where we think we're strong, well, that's where we're weak. Where we know we're weak, that's where we depend on the Lord. And that's where we discover how strong he is.